Now, for this one, I'm going to show you how to create a, an extension and how to configure the PBX and give you some idea of how you might be able to configure your phone or your device connecting to it. So the first thing you need to do is to log in. As you can see, I've already done this here. And then what you need to do is you need to go to the Applications drop-down menu in Free PBX, and then you need to click on the Extensions. Now, um, this is a configured version of Free PBX for my home system. And you can see over here, you can see there are four extensions already set up. So to create an extension, it's very easy. Um, you have a look over here. There's a, a drop-down set of menus here. You want to click on Generic SIP Device. I'm not experienced enough to understand what these other uh, three here and a virtual extension is useful to set up if you want to divert a number to somewhere but you want generic SIP device. You click submit and um, you start the process of creating a new extension. So there's lots of information here but you don't need to configure all of this to get a basic uh, connection up and running and again um, as I've disclaimered in other videos I'm not an expert I'm learning about this myself however what you need to do is you need to put an extension number in um, as you can see my extensions are listed from uh, 1001 through to 1004 um, so for this case I'm going to put 1005 so if someone on one of these other extensions uh, dial 1005 whatever phone I configure to this extension will ring um, you might want to call it a display name, so I'm going to give it an example and call it, let's call it example, okay? Um, then we're going to move down. Outbound CID is setting a specific number going out. You don't need to worry about any of this. There are a few options here that you can start to fiddle around with. The great thing about free PBX, if you want to find out something, they have these little question marks, and you can just hover your cursor over the question marks, and it will give you a short exclamation um, uh, about what it is. The other thing is you need what to do is set up a password. Now, in this case, free PBX generates a password for you already. This is a huge password, and so you might want to just put something in there that's a little bit more simple. Bear in mind, if you do eventually open your free PBX out to the open world, people might try to hack your extension so they can make calls. The other thing you might want to make aware is this recording process here. An internal call are, are extensions calling extensions, and external is dialing through one of your trunks. We'll get to trunks another time. So you can actually record the voice. But, um, you know, when you phone these call centers and they, they say things, we will record your call for training purposes, you're able to set that up there. But obviously, you need to be careful. Some countries, this is illegal. Um, and there's all sorts of things that you get into trouble with by recording people's conversations. If you want to set up a voicemail, you can. Uh, you put a voicemail password in here. Bear in mind, that's something that you dial through the phone, so it needs to be a numerical password. I usually do four or five digits. You can also, through 3PX, which is really, 3PBX, which is really exciting, is that you can set an email address, and that will email certainly a notification if you miss a call, um, but also you can click on the attached option here, and um, if someone leaves a voicemail, you can set it to send a WAV file to that email address, and you can play it on your computer or phone which I do quite often. Um, and the other thing you might want to look at setting is, is this here down the bottom here. No answer, busy, no, not reachable. You can actually set options. They're all defaulted to your voicemail, but you can set options to move things to different places. For example, if no one picks up that phone, you can divert that call to another extension. So, for example, you've got a, a phone line downstairs. It rings. No one's downstairs, so it rings upstairs. Um, so there are lots of little things. You can send it to a different voicemail. You can send it to a different number. You can do all sorts of exciting things. And you clip simply then, at that point, click Submit. You'll notice a new extension will appear down the bottom. Now with free PBX you always need to apply the configuration. This um, red box often appears um, to, to make it active. It just basically rewrites um, parts of the uh, databases and things like that to say look now we have our new extension. There it is example. Now if I was to dial 105 or 1005 rather that will then call 
that phone. But how do you configure something? How do you connect something to this phone, um, this extension? Well, what I've done here is um, I use these grand stream devices. They're little boxes that plug into just general generic phones that you can buy out of the shop. Um, and what you need to do is, um, and every system is different. Um, there's um, The things that you need to do is you need to tell your phone where the SIP server is, and that's the IP address um, on your local network of your Raspberry Pi in my case. So my Raspberry Pi has a fixed IP address there. So that's telling the phone to look there. The SIP user ID in this case will be the phone number, which is one, here is 1002, but we've just created 1005. You, you, you put its name in there, you put its password in there, um, uh, and then um, you click apply. Um, and what should happen now is that phone will then authenticate onto your Raspberry Pi or whatever your free PBX system is. And they'll start to talk to each other. So if you have more than one phone connected, you can now start to make in Internal calls, which is really exciting. But you can't make external calls yet because you need to start to set up some trunks. And I will explain that in another session.